Hey guys, it's your boy Harry Wilmington here. From here on out, I am your introvert dating coach. So today guys, I kind of wanted to talk to you about some dating theory that I had. Every so often, I'll have conversations with friends of mine or people that I'm close to, and in the process of talking about things like dating, relationships, women, etc., there will be things that come to our attention that I'll start making up theories about as to why this could possibly be a thing and then ways to be able to make sure that's not going to affect you negatively in your dating life. So I want to talk today about fights, about my theory about part of the reasons why they actually originate, what we're trying to do when we in instigate a fight with somebody and how you can use this potential knowledge to be able to help you when you are in your dating relationships and you come across a situation where you are not on the same page as a woman you're dating. And so for me, so I had a conversation the other day where we were talking about this and the idea came up that a lot of the reasons that we choose the people that we choose boils down to two important things, which is honestly one, uh, our, our parents and how they were to us. And then also the fact that people typically tend to date people that look like themselves. So to the first part, your parents are your original influences as it pertains to how you're viewing men and women and how you're seeing them interact and relate with each other. So for most men, we're typically chasing after women that have similar traits to our mothers, like in terms of whether it's the build, whether it's their values that they instilled in us, whether it's a bunch of other things that there are our initial model for the women that are out there. And a lot of times subconsciously men will go after women that have similar traits to their mother, since that was the archetype for women that they deal with. So that's the first thing. The second thing though, which is important is that it's been shown in study after study that a lot of times the reason they'll say that couples look like each other is because people actually go after people that tend to look like them in terms of uh, their race, in terms of their skin tone, in terms of their facial structure. Not necessarily the height aspect because a lot of times women want somebody that's taller than them. But even that, again, that goes back to like what was the ratio of height that she saw her mom and dad have. But people are typically looking for people that look similar to themselves. And I think part of that honestly is because we think highly of ourselves and as a means to be able to get along with another person, it's gonna be a lot easier to pick somebody that not only has the same kind of likes that we have, but is also very structurally similar. Because if we like the way we look ourselves, we're probably gonna like somebody that looks similar to us, okay? So this is the basis for the theory that I came up with in the process of me having this conversation. Because what I said was, yeah, people typically tend to try to find people that look like them or act like people that have been close in their lives, whether it's, again, their parents primarily, but also their grandparents, sometimes their aunts and uncles and stuff like that. But as it pertains to us looking for people that are, that, that are similar to us, I said that could be a very major reason why couples early on when they have fights, they have fights that are just so cataclysmic and they're really like each side is fighting the other one to try to win, quote unquote, the fight. And I think it has nece nothing necessarily to do with the other person being wrong so much as it's displaying that this other person is in fact not like us in some ways. So think about an argument you may have had early on with a girl you're dating, right? Let's say for example, uh, oh, I've had this before, okay? Because I'm an introvert and I like my alone time. So there've been several times where I've dated women where I will express this need to have alone time. And their response is a negative one, something akin to like, well, how could you do that? Or why would you wanna spend time away from me? Like, I really like you and I would never wanna spend time away from you. So when you hear that argument, what do you hear? You hear her saying, that's not something I would do. So what happens in these kind of arguments is the other person is saying to you, hey, we're alike in a lot of ways, but now I'm seeing a part of you that is not acting like me, is not thinking like me, is not doing something in a way that I would do it, and this concerns me because I thought you were like me, and now you're not. And so now, in order for us to be congruent with each other, I now have to fight you to try to get back to acting the way that I would do in a situation so we can still be similar. And so this is my theory about how a lot of these early on fights start because whether you're in the right or wrong or whether she's in the right or wrong or sometimes it's not even about 
either of you being right or wrong. What it could really be is you're now confronting a situation whereby you two are not on the same page and it's gonna be bothersome for both sides. Think about like, say you want her to try out like frog's legs. You're a fan of frog's legs and you want her to try it out and she doesn't wanna try it out. She's vehemently against it. She doesn't wanna do it. And you start trying to push her to do this thing and now she's feeling like you're disrespecting her and how dare you push this thing on me to, to, to try when I don't, I, don't, I don't want to. Why would you make me do this, et cetera, et cetera. That's an example of you trying to push onto her something that you do because you're like, hey, I like this thing. And again, if my theory is correct and you need her to be the same as you, then you're going to push her to do this thing she doesn't want to do just so you can now see her in the same light as yourself. Now, why do I say that this is the thing that is most likely true? It's because I've, I've experienced it and seen it so many times, whether it's been times where I've gotten mad at the other person because I thought a way about it or something and they didn't have the same opinion as me or I wanted to do a thing and bring them along with me and they didn't want to do that thing and now I'm mad because they're not doing the same thing and vice versa with them. They want me to watch a certain show or, or you know, be more extroverted at parties and stuff like that and me not doing that. That now messes up their world because I'm no longer the same. I'm no longer congruent to them. And it's important to at least have this theory of knowledge in your head. Because if you if you notice it, you're going to start to observe that happening. You're going to start to observe that, for example, you'll be dating a girl, you've been dating her for a couple of months, and then you'll want to do something and she's like, you know, suddenly try to fight you on it. And initially your instinct might be to try to now fight her back and prove why you can do this thing. But if you stop and think, hey, wait a minute, like, could this be one of those things that Harry was talking about? Could this be one of those things where, where she's really fighting me, not because it's necessarily a bad thing for me to do, but because it goes against how she would do something and it's making her think that we are now not as similar as she once thought that we were because I'm now not like her in that way. And that can really also give you perspective on when you start to feel mad or upset about something that she brings to you because you might start to have a fight with a woman and then be like, wait a minute, wait a minute is this thing really a big deal or am I feeling like I'm about to fight this person over something because it's now making her slightly different from me? It's not the way I would do things or the way I would view something but because she is, we're now different and it bugs me subconsciously because I want her to think like me. I want her to do things that I want to do and she's not and that bugs me. And as you're able to observe that, you'll actually start to find that you can now make a conscious effort to really say, this isn't a big deal. Or in the grand scheme of things, what this person wants to do, the thing that they're thinking about doing, the thing that they're you know, interacting with or whatever, this doesn't have to be a fight. Now, that's not every single thing because some things are gonna be major things. You know, Things like politics, things like religion, those things can be big fire starters that you might have to really, if you wanna go the route of not fighting, you have to really like hunker down on like what the rules for that are gonna be. But it makes it harder, especially if you're somebody that's going to possibly have kids, those kind of things can really affect later down the line like how you guys raise your kids and how you guys get along when they come about. Cause it's totally different when kids are in the game. But with that said, for some day-to-day -day things, for some minor things, like I said, I said things like you want to try something and she doesn't, you want your alone time and she feels some kind of way about that. Those are things where you can have an honest conversation and say, hey, look, you know what? I know that this is not something that you would do, but really consider if this is really actually harmful to the relationship or if it's just you're upset about it because you want me to be like you in this way and I'm not or I'm realizing, I'm recognizing, I want you to think this way about this thing and you don't and it upsets me, but your thought is actually not a bad thought, it's just not how I would look at it. And as you're able to be more objective about those kind of things, you'll start to see that you don't have to be completely similar with somebody in all these ways in order to get along with them. And also, you might find that even if you're not currently similar in the thought or similar in certain things you guys wanna do, that if you give that other person grace and give them the leeway to be who they are in spite of you not necessarily being on the same plane as them with certain things that they might then be open to trying these things. They might be open to your thought, the way you think about things and possibly changing their thoughts to be similar to yours, but you can't force that kind of thing. So it's just, again, it's just a theory that I have. It's a theory based on a conversation I had this week that I was like, you know what, aside from people looking at, at their parents as their model for who they're going to be in relationships with, and aside from us wanting to be similar, uh, find somebody that is similar to ourselves, I wonder if that then also affects the kind of fights people have based on just how similar they want this other person to be, all right? So just put that in your in your hat and keep it for now. And when you start having discussions with women and you start feeling yourself kind of 
not agreeing with him on certain things, think about if that could be a possible reason as to why that is. Thank you for watching this episode of the Introvert Dating Success Show. If you found the info in this episode to be helpful, please show your support by clicking on the tip jar tab, the link of which can be found at the website and in the description below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment on this episode and catch new episodes right here on YouTube or wherever podcasts can be found. In the meantime, be sure to check out these other episodes so you too can learn to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.